Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to show you how you can use DAX in order to interact with the y-axis of a chart in Power BI. The article comes from a question that I was reading on one of our forums. A user had a very specific requirement. He wanted to have two charts showing two different products, but sharing the same y-axis, and the y-axis needed to be computed dynamically based on the values and the product that were shown in the visual. Uh, he tried to solve the problem by using, by using the interaction, the visual interaction between visuals, and the solution was just partial. When reading about the question, I realized that uh, if only he had used some DAX code, the solution would have been straightforward, and hence the article. So I'm going to show you different examples of how you can use DAX to change the axis of a visual. The first two examples are quite simple, and we are going to use them as a warm-up for the third example, which is the answer to uh, the question. Uh, because that requires also some tweaking of the models and a bit more complex DAX code. But these are the kind of uh, topics that are much easier to describe with Power BI Info. So with no further ado, let's jump to the demo and let's see the scenario. The first example that I want to show you is rather simple. I have a slicer by category and I have a, uh, a column chart that is showing the sales amount sliced by brand. Everything is working fine and there's nothing fancy here. This is uh, showing the sales amount by brand with no filter. And if I click on different categories, you see that the chart, of course, changes. Now, among the many things that change in a chart, now please note uh, the y-axis. If I don't make any selection, the range goes from 0 to 3 million. But if I select computers, for example, then the range goes from 0 to 2 million. So the y-axis of the chart changes dynamically based on the selection. And this is uh, the expected and desired behavior in most of the scenarios. But what if I want the y-axis to remain static? I want just a value to be the same, so that I, whenever I change the category, I go from audio to TV and video to cell phones, I still see columns that can be compared one with the other. That is not going to work if I use the automatic definition of the y-axis. So I can get rid of the automatic definition of the y-axis and enter a value. That is rather simple. I simply go here and in the visual, in the y-axis, I can go to the maximum and enter a value. But by doing that, I'm entering a value. So as soon as data changes and more sales come or the data is updated, my value might no longer be correct. So it would be better to use DAX to compute the maximum value of any brand. I'm slicing by brand, yes, by any brand, regardless of the selection, and use that value as the maximum value. It's a very simple piece of DAX code. So we can author a measure that computes this value and then use it as uh, the maximum value of the wire axis. In order to do that, let me open tabular editor so we can write the DAX code and we start writing a measure. I want to create a new measure that contains uh, the Y axis. Let me see the name that I used in the article. So I use the same y-axis range or categories. So the measure is y-axis range or categories. And the number it needs to compute is the maximum value of any brand regardless of the filter context that the slicer is placing on my model. So what I need to do is compute a max x, uh, much larger font, MXX over the values of product brand, because this is the column that is present as uh, the legend of my uh, chart of the sales amount. If I compute it this way, this is just computing the maximum, but it is filling the filter from the slicer. And I want to get rid of the filter from the slicer. So I embed everything inside calculate and I remove filters from the product category. 
Now, in this very specific example, I'm just removing the filter from the product category. In your specific scenario, you might have different slicers and you might need to use Calculate in a different way. And that's it. I can save it, go here, and my sales amount by brand, if I remove everything, you see that uh, the maximum is around 3 million. And if I select, uh, let's say, camera and concorder, it's less than 1 million. But I can go in the visual, in the y-axis, and for the maximum, I select uh, the value of my newly created measure. Y-axis range, all categories. And if I click on OK, you see that now, despite having selected camera and concorders, the range goes to 3 million. Actually, it is not really 3 million. If you look, uh, when we don't have any selection, it goes only to 2 million. And whatever we do, the range goes to 2 million because it's 2.7, 2.8. And when you define a measure that, finds, uh, that defines a range, it's always a good idea to round it to an even number or a reasonable number that is a multiple of millions in this case. So we can change the code of our measure, and instead of just computing the maximum of um, the sales amount, we use a roundup, and we round it to minus six digits. Roundup accepts, accepts the number of digits on the right of the decimal point if it is a, a positive number. If it is a negative number, it rounds on the left of the decimal place. So I can save it, and if I now go to my visual, you see that uh, the range goes to 3 million. And it does not matter what I do, it will always use the same range. That means uh, the height of the charts can now be compared between different versions of the same report. Now, this is not the kind of code that you are likely to use in your scenario. It was just a warm-up to start getting acquainted with the technology and the methodology we are going to use. The second example I want to show you is probably a bit more interesting, and it involves having two different charts in the same page. I already have it here, and I have two charts. One is showing the sales amount by brand, and the other one is showing the sales amount by category. Now, because of the way I place the two charts one beside the other, it's quite natural for users to compare the height of the bars in one chart and the other chart. But the thing is, this time too, the range is not the same. Sales amount by category goes up to 4 million and sales amount by brand stops at 3 million. Meaning that the height of these bars is, has not the same meaning as the height of this bar despite the bars being around the same height. So what we want to do is to sync the height, sync the Y range of both charts to show the same value. And we are going to use a very similar technique, but this time we need to use for the maximum, not the maximum of only the brand, we need to search for the maximum value of any brand, the maximum value of any category, because I'm using brand and category as the axis of my charts. And then I find the maximum of the two values that I found. And this is going to be the value that I want to use in both charts. So let's write the code together. Let me copy the code of this measure because we're going to use something that is very close to this. So I just copy and paste it. Uh, okay, and this will be, again, I need to find the name that I use, uh, y-axis range, brand and category. Brand and category. For this version, I don't need these remove filters, so we can get rid of it. And this is just computing the maximum value by brand. And because this is not the only number that I want, I start to store it in a variable. And I call it max range by brand. Then I copy everything and I compute the max range by category in another variable. And this time, instead of iterating over the brand, it iterates over the category. And it computes the sales amount. Now I have two variables, max range by brand and max range by category, that contain the two maximum values. And I need to search for the maximum between the two. 
So I create a third variable, this time is uh, the result, that is again the max between max range by brand and max range by category. And finally, I return the result. Now, this measure is going to compute the maximum by brand or category, and I'm going to use this measure for both visuals in order to synchronize their height. Let me save it. Then we go in Power BI, and on the first visual, on the y-axis, we use for the maximum my newly introduced measure, that is, that is y-axis range brand and category. And you see that it changes and now it's showing 4 million. But I need to do the same here because uh, I don't know which of the two will be the largest one. So here again, we use a Y axis range brand and category. We click on OK. And by doing that, now I can compare the height of uh, these uh, columns with the height of these other columns because they are both using the same range. 4 million for sales amount by category and 4 million for sales amount by brand. So you have seen that uh, the technique of using DAX code to control uh, the range of y-axis is useful for one visual, but it is much more useful when you have multiple visuals and you want to use the same value for all of them. Now it's time to go for the specific scenario that uh, gave birth to the entire article. Because in that scenario, we have two charts. But this time, the two charts are showing the yearly sales of two different products that a user can select. Let me show you again with uh, the report. I already have this. Uh, this is the, the partial solution. So I'm selecting a brand and another brand. This brand is filtering, is a slicer that is filtering the product brand. And the same is happening for this slicer. Again, this is filtering again the product brand. So I have two slicers both on the product brand. If I select from here, for example, Contoso, you see that, well, let's see something different like Proswear or Tailspin Toys. You see that the chart is showing Tailspin Toys both here and here. And the reason is there is a visual interaction A Slicer filters all the visuals in the same report. Not only the visuals, Slicers also filters one each other. So when I select uh, Taste Pin Toys here from the second Slicer, I can actually only select Taste Pin Toys. So if I want to show the value of one brand in a chart and the value of another brand in a different chart, I need to play with the uh, interactions. So I need to go I need to go to I need to find okay the format button I have already checked edit interaction and I say that this brand is not going to filter this slicer by doing that when I select for example Fabricam or Litware you see that in this slicer I can still choose whatever I want not only this slicer does not even need to filter Uh, where is it? If I select the slicer, okay, uh, probably need a bit more space. Uh, this slicer, okay, does not need to fill, does not need to filter this chart. And let me go down here too, because I want this slicer not to filter this chart, not to filter this brand. Actually, this can be removed. So now, this slicer is not going to filter, no, it's going to filter uh, the, the chart below it, but it's not going to filter the right part. And the slicer on the right is not going to filter anything on the left. This means that I can choose Litware from one brand, I can choose Fabricant from the other one, and now I have the sales amount by year of one brand and another. Let me choose a Contoso, so the difference is much more important. But the thing is, I'm still in trouble because of the y-axis. Because look at the sales amount by year, this goes to 200,000 or probably 250,000, whereas the sales amount by year of Contoso reaches 1 million. So the y-axis of the two charts is not in sync. And this looks like the very same scenario we were facing before, 
we now have two slices and we just need to write a measure that make their y-axis in sync. The thing is, this time it's a bit more intricate because, because of the way we created the, the interactions between the visuals, the chart on the left has no clue about the very existence of a filter for the brand Contoso. So what I need to do, if you think about that, I need to find the maximum yearly sales of Litware or Contoso and then use the maximum sales of one of the two as the maximum value for the y-axis of both charts. But this means that when I'm computing the maximum value in the left chart, I need to have access to the selection that is driving the right chart. And that selection is happening in the slicer on the right. But because of the way I set the interactions between the visuals, the chart on the left has no clue about any filter coming from the right. And the same happened in the opposite direction. So I basically created two different reports and then I using them on the same page, but they do not communicate in any way. The thing is, if I enable interaction, it's not going to work because uh, if I select uh, the filter from in this way, you see that because Litware filter, uh, this filter, this brand filters Litware, this brand filter Contoso, both filters are working and I see nothing on the, uh, in my chart. So I just need to change the way I created my report. And in order to solve the problem, what I need to do is first create two disconnected tables. I'm creating a table containing the brands, two tables actually containing only the brands, and these two tables will be completely disconnected from the model. These two tables will be used to feed the slicers, and once this is going to work, then I will use the information in the slicer to filter the value shown, the sales amount, and in a different way I will use the selection made in the two slicers to compute the maximum values. So let me first restore, uh, no, restore the interactions the right way. Uh, and let's start. We first need to create a couple of tables. So the first table we want to create, uh, we can do that just right here. We can create a new table. Uh, let's call it brands01. Uh, that is just all noble and crew of product brand. And that creates a table containing all the different brands. And then I create another table, brands02. That is absolutely the same value. Now, these two tables will be part of my model, but I'm not going to use to let them filter anything. I have product sales data, but if I place brand01 and brand02 in the diagram, you see that these two tables have no relationship with the remaining part of the model. And I don't want any relationship to be in place. I just want the table to be as they are. And then I use the brand from here. Instead of using the brand from product, I'm going to use uh, on the left brand 01. And on the right, I'm, getting, I'm removing the product brand and I use brand 02. So what happens now is that whatever I do here, whatever selection I do, nothing is gonna change in my values. If I select the phone company, I still see the sales amount of everything. And the reason is I'm not filtering anything. A filter on any other tables is not going to reach my data model. But it also means I can now edit the interaction and make everything filter everything. So this brand can actually filter everything else. And this slicer can actually filter everything else because the filter is not doing anything. The next step, I create a couple of measures, one for the left chart and one for the right chart that use the information in the slicer in order to compute the correct value. We do that again in tabular editor. So we create a new measure. Let's call it sales01. And sales01 uses calculate it computes the sales amount, then it needs to grab the selection made in the brands01 table. So it takes the values of brands01 brand, 
and I use it to filter the product. I use it three times as product brand. Product. I actually want brand. So I'm taking the selection brand or one brand and I'm using it to filter the product brand. So this is going to compute the sales amount given the selection that happens in the slicer on the left. And in a similar way, let me copy and paste the measure. I create sales O2 that does exactly the same operation, but it's using brand O2. Then I save everything. I can go back to Power BI and I remove sales amount from the first slicer and I use sales 01. Now you see that this is showing the phone company. You can tell it by the fact that it goes on to 1 million. And if I change the value, you see that uh, the values in the chart change depending on what I have here. And the same in the second slicer. I can go here, get rid of uh, this and place sales 02. So that when I select Fabricam, I now see Fabricam. So I have Fabricam here and let's say Litware there. This is the same visualization I had before. I have sales of one by year, sales of two by year. Same uh, selection, so Litware and Fabricam, the sales of Litware, the same of sales of Fabricam. And I still have the same problem I had before. This goes to 0 0.2 million, this goes to 0 0.4 million. But the important thing is that now each chart is able to access the filters that appear on the slicer. And I can make the best usage of it. I can write a measure that finds the maximum values of either sales of one or sales of two, and then use that as the maximum value for my chart. So that drives me to the last measure that I need to write. Let create a third measure that I called y-axis range both brands and I just need a first variable range 01 which is just at the max x over the year because I'm showing the yearly sales of sales 01 this variable using max x computes the maximum yearly sales of the first selection. Then I do the same for range 02, but it computes range 02. And finally, I compute my result, which is the, no, just the max between range 01 and range 02. Return result. And if I did everything correctly, this is going to compute the maximum of one of the two brands that have been selected. Let me save it. We go back to Power BI and we set here for the Y axis, the maximum using the last measure that I wrote, which is uh, Y axis range both brands. And you see that now it, show, it goes to 0 0.4 million and we need to do the same here. And we want in sales of the, the, the y-axis range, both ranges. Now, if I select Contoso, one side and Fabrica on the other side, you see that uh, we go to 0 0.8 million, 0 0.8 million. So I'm using the maximum of the two. And if I choose one that doesn't have a lot of space, like Tailspin Toys, I'm still using also for Tailspin Toys, uh, a bit smaller, okay. 0 0.8 million for both. This means that I can actually compare the sides of uh, these bars with the sides of these bars because I have the option of uh, synchronizing the two slicers uh, using the same y-axis. That's a solution that you could not have done just by using the visual interaction, but it is quite a simple solution if you just start writing some DAX code. As you have seen, DAX is your best friend. DAX is powerful not only as a tool to compute an interesting matrix, interesting calculation, it is also useful to drive the behavior of some visuals. 
you cannot change all the properties of all the visuals, but most of the key properties uh, that can be dynamically uh, computed can be expressed also through DAX measures. And writing the correct DAX measure, that means knowing uh, the, the basics of DAX that help you write those measures, gives you a lot more power in making Power BI do exactly what your customer wants. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.